Have you ever seen that sex scene in Excalibur where uh, the guy's having sex in armour? Well, my girlfriend said, I don't think that can be done. So do you know what I said to her? Bring me my armour! Do samurai wear helmets in battle? Obvious answer, yes. But do lead characters wear helmets in battle? And do they always wear helmets in battle? Recently, three YouTubers who are great YouTubers, I've spoke to them all personally and they know more about Japanese traditional history than I do watched Age of Samurai and uh, all three of them said very similar things. Important character in Samurai history warrior wear no helmets. I need a drink. Now you know I already have a problem with this in every show because it's just something that TV does. If you don't know who that is, you're an idiot. That's Metatron. And he's the king of YouTube with armor and samurai and everything. He literally trounces us all. So um, he's a dead nice man. And if you don't follow him, clearly go and follow him. He totally knows his stuff. I don't, why is he not wearing a helmet? Um, uh, there's, there, there's minor, you know, things you're going to obviously see because it's not... They want to show, obviously, oh, he's the more important individual. He's not wearing a helmet. He's not wearing, you know, a face mask. Obviously, he's, you know, the main character we're showing off. Uh so that is the Shogunate. That's Nick the Shogunate. And he's the prince of samurai history. Metatron's up there with his 80 million followers. The Shogunate's like that. I will take over you. You know, and he's just climbing very quickly. He's a dead nice man. He's really nice. I speak to him quite a lot. And he is very knowledgeable about stuff. But again, this question about why are we wearing samurai helmets? Why not? Why should we? Let's try again. Now this is Japan at war. Make sure you follow this guy. He's really good. I've done a, a Skype meeting with him. He was dead, dead nice. Now, basically, I'm sure somewhere in his video he talks about the helmet, but I might be mistaken. So Japan at war, if I am mistaken, I apologize profusely. But he does talk about the hairstyles, which he's absolutely correct about. Again, he's got some ace information. Please follow him at Japan at war. Go follow him now. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take you through loads of documentation. I'm going to take you through loads of images. So stay with me and I'm going to show you what I think. But why am I pulling this up? Why is this a thing? And it, when I was watching these three YouTubers, I was like, actually, I don't know the answer to that. And in the back of my mind, I was like, I'm sure the answer's no. But I don't know the answer. And this is, I assume, their opinion. And I was like, I actually don't know. So I'm going to find out. Because it's my opinion that no matter when you watch any Western thing, Lord of the Rings or something like that, everybody's got the bloody helmets on all the time. And loads of times in the past I've gone, why have they got their helmets on? Get them off. Nobody's going to wear their helmets that much. So the question becomes is, did samurai wear helmets all the time? So here we go. That was the introduction. Now we're going to do the video. Let, let's take a dig into history and find out. So guys, today I'm going to be taking you through some old documents. These are from the 1600s by a tactician that served Tokugawa Yorinobu. And basically these are historical documents that describe the way samurai did samurai things and how they use their armour. So you'll see that uh, I'm actually going to quote from these two books. Please do get yourself a copy. I'm going to be showing you lots of pictures of really small miniature sort of samurai. It's from this book and some of them date back all the way to the 1500s and some of them 16 and 1700s. I will try to get as many of the older ones as possible, but I have to zoom in on my iPad to get these. So just be aware. There are other pictures which will come up from different manuals that are not from here, but that when it's a little samurai, they're all from this book, which was a wonderful birthday present I got. Okay, the first thing you should know, there are approximately four types of people on a battlefield, okay? High-ranking people, like this captain with his uh, sai high in his hand, he's uh, mounted and he's got his flags. Massive proportion of the army is made up of standard samurai. They're just people who are on foot with their banners, with their spears, their yari and their swords, and they're just doing what samurai do. They're the main bulk of the, the samurai people. Uh, population on a battlefield. Next you're going to get Ashigaru. Can you see them there at the top, the little green guys with the little tin lids on? So you've got a lot of Ashigaru standing around. They're at the lower level people. But even lower than the Ashigaru are the servants. You can see straw sandal making servants at there. So th right at the bottom you've got servants, Ashigaru, standard samurai and leading samurai. Right, let's be sure of what we're discussing here. Uh, the boys are saying that samurai should wear armour 
in war. I totally agree. Uh, they should um, helmets. They should totally be wearing helmets in war. But that brings the question: Is when are they not wearing helmets in war? Because you can't wear them all the time. What about if you're having a meeting, or do you deliver a message, or what about when you go to sleep in war? Do you wear the helmets then? So the answer is no. So the question is obvious: Do samurai wear helmets in war? Of course they do. Uh, the next obvious question: Do samurai always wear helmets in war? Well, no. The less obvious question is, well, when do they wear helmets and when do they not wear helmets? So that's what we're going to explore. So in a military campaign, there are times when people wear helmets, like the guy on the left, and times when they don't wear helmets. But the question is, is when is that? So let's look at some um, quotes from the medieval period. So this is from the scroll Heiki Yoho, and it's if you are sent to the enemy side as a messenger on a battlefield. So that's the topic. Take off your helmet, raise up your fan, uh, when at a far enough distance. It goes on to say later in a different one that you invert your spear. So you definitely take off your helmet when acting as a messenger coming up to an aggressive force. So here's the next one, same scroll. Uh, concerning customs regarding hostages at the time of surrender, I've made got rid of most of this, but it says, the Taisho who sat on a seat then takes off his helmet, picks up a pottery cup and gives forth to uh, his oath of allegiance while sitting on a stool. Um, after the promises are given, the ministers who are in position of the left and of the right should bow and when the hostages withdraw, take their seats. The senior counsellor who acts as an mediator should be entrusted with the hostages. So there's a very sophisticated way of a hostage exchange and oath giving when somebody has been basically at the time of surrender so um, we have to be careful here but he is wearing the helmet before he takes it off now this one is what I talked about in Age of War basically when you march in Samurai War you march in two col columns with helmet bearers should be in the centre and spear bearers go on the outside um, if marching in a single column then the spear is carried on the right so that the man can get it in his hands as normal when marching on a narrow path you, uh, path, you come together so basically helmets are not worn when you're marching they're used or they're on helmet bearing well sorry they're with helmet bearers and they're used on something called a kabuto date now this is a really interesting picture you can see to the right of the lord there who's in the center he's got a spear bearer on his right exactly as it just said it might be a three-dimensional banner this umajirushi but it looks like a spear with scabbard then he's got his helmet bearer on the left which is pretty much where they said we're marching in a single column. You can see the lower ranking samurai who do not have helmet bearers, who wear in their own helmets, and you can then see side assistants and people like that. I'll go through who exactly uh, walks with the Lord, and it all depends on how posh and rich the Lord is, but there is a specific set of people, and they're not all looking the same. That was the problem with Age of Samurai. They had people just look the same, and it was wrong. So let's take a look at, close look at helmet stands. As you can see, this is on a pole. It's actually carried like that, or it is um, stood on a small stand. There are two types of stands. There's one for inside your tent and one for outside, and one uh, which is also used on marches. But here, this is probably just inside the tent one. They get ready to stand, and this is your outside one, which is a big tall one, banners included, and that is carried um, through the procession like you just saw with that chap there so these are called kabuto date normally there are different names for them but this that's the normal name back to the original manuscript so when marching to a distant province there is no need to wear your armor instead march forth in the howry jacket however at times you may also have to don your armor um, and the jacket also sometimes your armor will be in a container and should be carried behind you alternatively can connect can be kept with the helmet container and both can be carried together have your spear carried on the right and your armor carried on the left keep these two close at hand and the helmet should be carried on a kabute kabuto date so let's go back to some pictures and have a look at that so as you can see basically the one on the left is armored and the one on the right is not armored uh, and in the one on the left actually is wearing a helmet but he also has a more prestigious helmet in a kabuto date kabuto stand and you can see there he's got his spear and carrier on the right he's clearly not in armor but look at the two box carriers they're the box carriers who are probably carrying the armor for him so processions are totally different to what you expect they actually have multiple different types of people and all of the different hi social hierarchies around them but in specific orders so who are these people first of all you've got the grooms first and second groom 
You've also got the assistants, the spear bearer, and the armor bearer. Now, sometimes the armor bearer, of course, will bear the helmet, but you also have more people. If you're richer, you have more, but your generic samurai who is mounted, mounted, will have these five people with him. A footed samurai may not. They might only have one or two people. It depends on how wealthy you are. So here's the details for the Kabuto Date. So it's in uh, Nato Ryu. So carry it on a pole. The length is six shaku, so it's over six feet tall. There are set rules for it. This uh, also type of stands for static display. We've discussed that. Um, and basically it says Kabuto Date helmet stands are to be carried when marching. So your helmet is not even on if you're a mounted samurai. It's normally sat next to you. So there'll be tons of people without their helmets on. So uh, even if you have many servants, take only two or three of you when you leave the procession. So you're going around, you have to leave it, take two or three. Armour box carriers and spear bearers should not leave the sides of their master. This should be strictly enforced. So you've got, you, we're now starting to see what marching is like. There's lots of people, some helmets on, some off. Just to a picture, I've told Nick from the Shogun about this picture, so I've put this up specifically for him. And people ask me all the time, when people are using crests, how come they're not using the same crests? Or, you know, uh, do people use the same crests? Or I've seen families with the same crests. Well, actually, like huts like this, you have the crest, you have your ceremonial helmet, you have the different types of standards, spears, everything outside, so that people can understand which warrior is there. Now, I've always been honest, I'm not uh, great at kanji, so the kanji on the right is talking about sort of like equipment and stuff. But as far as I'm aware, this is a military camp hut, and the idea is that samurai may have the same crest, but actually, they also have, you see the thing on the very right, the two balls on a stick? That probably is umajirushi, which is the uh, standard for carrying next to your horse, same as the two little mop-like type things. So, yeah, and then you've got obviously the, the spear or that type of information, uh, sorry, a weapon and the sashimono banner. So you know who's in there because you know that some people have the same crest so you can get mixed up, but very few or nobody has the same crest, the same banner, the same helmet and the same umajirushi three-dimensional standard bearing pole. So that's how we start to see the, the difference between samurai. So we've gone some processions to not actually in the battle camp. Now the types of boxes they use, are, so this is a, I've just picked this as a generic type and these are what they would put on their backs and carry things in. So yes, you won't even have your armor on, somebody, some poor Joe would be carrying it and then somebody would be carrying your helmet because it'd be too heavy to all at once. Somebody's carrying your spear. So this idea of samurai without their helmets on is massively okay when we're marching and when we're in camp absolutely no problem so what about in battle can samurai not have helmets in battle so that was the main crux wasn't it can a samurai go without a helmet in battle so let's look at some old art and let's look at some documentation but i'll tell you now the amount of traditional art there is with samurai without helmets on is ridiculous there's so much of it however we have to be very careful with art and i'll talk about that in a moment but the some of these pictures are very very old and they clearly have warriors without helmets. But what does the document say? One of my favorite quotes from the documents uh, from the Book of Samurai, the Suhada Musha. This term is for warriors who fight without armor. In a long-term campaign, if it is the case that there have only been a few close combats between Ashigaru and the samurai who only injured upon the shoulder other such light injuries, they will wish to venture out to war again before the injury recovers or wish to go back to battle without armour even on. In this case, they must inform the Kashira or Bugyo commander and they can move out without armour. Not just a helmet, full armour. You need to fully, you need to notify your commander before you become one of these warriors um, because... So you need to basically make sure if you see such a warrior like this, you kill them. So if a warrior is just coming at you, they're proper samurai. They're probably not lower class. They might look like lower class people because they're not wearing armor, but they're not. They're hard as nails. So what have we got here? We've actually got a battlefield where there's people with no armor on, just like raincoats or something or just normal clothes and they are passing stuff to their captains they're passing it up you've got people who are armored but um they are and with helmets and just walking by the side you've got people in processions where they've got no helmets on not any armor on some people are in armor some people are not in armor so it isn't a case that occasionally somebody's not got a helmet on there'll be loads of times when nobody's got a helmet on loads 
And so the question then becomes, even in battle, well, we know that if the samurai's been wounded and they've got to sort their armour out, but they're, like, gagging for it, they come on. And he's saying if there's not much has happened, because basically um, they're like, come on, let's go. Some of the nutters at the front are like, let's kill everything. And we find in the same manuals that it says some people will even cut heads off and not even take them, just throw them to the side and just go for the next kill. They're, like, tapped. So occasionally you'll get these men who are just going out. Even if they can't get their armour on, they'll just be smashing through everything. So in these documentaries, we should actually be seeing some warriors who are like you know the, the sort of like assistant behind like put your armor on sire put your armor on sire he's like bollocks cleave cleave do you know what i mean it's like bloody hellfire so that's the sort of thing you're looking at with these you know unarmored warriors you've got one on one side going i'm just a peasant or i'm just a, an assist you know a, a lower level person helping him and we've got one hard and fully trained samurai warrior whose armor's just getting repaired and he's like let just murder everything. So two people with no helmet, no armour, on a battlefield at the same time, totally separate. So here's another one from Ipe Yoko. So uh, again, 1670. Be aware those heads or bodies with excellent armour armor but have no banners and are without a helmet but they have a war baton that's a, a, a extremely um important are probably taisho lord commanders if you kindle the general you'll be rewarded blah, blah blah so basically the leader doesn't have a helmet on very rarely does he put his helmet on but not i'll talk about that in a minute amazingly i think i found a picture of something like this i'm not quite sure uh, who the kanji is listing them as but here can you see he's got his sai high which is his banner on the floor in front of him looks like a mop basically basically that says he's a commander his armor is gorgeous but he doesn't have a helmet on which means he's really high ranking so this idea that because they're high ranking we're just trying to show the characters faces in films actually matches the fact that samurai would not wear their helmets because they were just mint anyway and they're protected by hundreds of people normally so we'll find this again in the literature uh, literature ipe yoko it is sometimes the case with samurai monks the lord commander that's the taisho and injured warriors that a banner is not carried and a helmet is not worn there are ample sort of like times when they don't have to wear it in battle so here it says again heiki yoho critical phase of battle like being in the mouth of a tiger and is where independent soldiers can again gain great achievements uh, information about the face card and thigh protectors from our school natoriu are transmitted here face cards are detrimental as they cut off your view and also inhibit your breathing the uh, chin guard style is acceptable and should not be removed so let's talk about the tiger's mouth first tiger's mouth normally means where the most amount of danger is and this happens in these kill zones so this is um, a castle entrance it's a square so it can be a kill zone and this is where they're saying like the best warriors can really make the best stand because it's a bloody dangerous place now I spoke to Metatron a year or so ago and I said I can't find Mempo that much. They don't seem to be there. And it seems that according to my research so far, this might change, that Mempo are actually taken off for hand-to-hand -hand combat. It seems that Hayadate and Mempo are for um, arrow-to-arrow -arrow combat because you don't want to be chinned in the face with an arrow. But once you get into combat, you, you take them off so a lot of the times these face cards are not on when you're actually in hand-to-hand -hand fighting uh, because they're more redundant than anything i think they're to stop arrows as are hayadate but i'm still on my research on that one guys i'm still the the, the story is not yet done now this appears to be a spear bearer who has no helmet on uh, he has his top knot in the classic to the front warrior style of japan everybody who does martial arts ties their headbands to the back like karate kid but actually most of samurai tie their headbands to the front and if you can see he's got a bag a head bag on his horse which is excellent so that's really really good and we can see that this team that's why i was annoyed with the age of samurai i was like i could totally have changed if i was on the show uh, and i could have got that sorted so um but they've just got things out of sync to be fair and i'll show you another way of attaching that head to the saddle just out of interest oh the, one of the reasons i love natoru so much is because this is so correct when you do it now you see the that thread going through his mouth that's your sagio cord or another piece of cord but usually a sagio and that's probably attached to the horse i'm not sure of the kanji i've not had it checked but basically this is how you attach a head to things and that is i think one of the rings from a saddle but i'll have to get that checked with the kanji but overall this is the correct method for tying a head to something and it's with your sagio cord it's not just there to look pretty guys it's there to put through the mouths of the enemy
Here we have another quote. Your face guard should be removed because it muffles your breathing when fighting. If it is the open face mask style, you do not have to remove it. That's quite interesting actually, isn't it? So this idea of that the samurai are always fighting in face masks is probably not true. And if you look at the art, it's just not there so much. Also, the helmet can ta be taken off and put on the Takahimo cords. There's a discussion of where the Takahimo cords are because different manuals. One says the side and one says the shoulder. And even in this manual, it switches between shoulder and side. So it is quite different difficult to get a grip of but your helmet is taken off and put on the side it's actually quite difficult that guys because when you take your helmet off and you're going you can tie it onto the shoulder cords and you can put it left or you can put it right there are different versions of it but also sometimes it's tied onto the side or behind at the side and um, even in Natoryu the cords change because over time the cords change all the earlier manuals say the Takahimo cord is at the side and all the later manuals say they're up here at the top and even the commentators, as you've seen in those quotes, are later by about 100 years and they change it to the different place. So you've got to be careful here. This is one of the problems I had with uh, this manual was working out where that code was. And uh, actually it changes about. So or I can't guarantee where they do it, but we do know that the samurai tie the helmet onto the left or the right, somewhere probably down the back near the side like that, and uh, keep it secured as they're marching. Of course, they'll put it on for when they go to war unless they have special permission or they're not doing it. But let's start look at some art now and see how much of the actual people there are not wearing helmets. Now, the argument with art is you've got to be careful because art is like, well, they weren't the people at the battle, they can get it wrong. Now, I've taken all this into account. I do understand the basic concepts of art history and art history in uh, archaeology and history and blah, blah, blah. But basically... I went through that book that I showed you at the beginning and there's tons and these some of these pictures are from like the early 1500s, early 1600s where the warriors are still about and the amount of people who are just not wearing a helmet is ridiculous. Let's have a look and this is like not far off the time or actually contemporary art. Um, again, I don't have access to Yoshio Miyoko, I'm not in Japan at the moment to just go through all this. I'd sit down and get them to do it all but we're just not there. So uh, let's go through some of the pictures and have a look. Okay, so some of this art is very old, as you can see, but loads of people, uh, I think they're just all getting killed. So there's some servants at the top. I just wanted to show you how there's lots of different people. These these are all battlefield pictures. Look at the guy with the massive horns. I've never really seen them wearing them before, so they are actually there. And again, there's one there. But you can see right next to him, no helmet and helmet on the same battlefield, right next to each other. Here we've got non-helmeted uh, gunners versus helmeted um uh, archers so there you can see total and the main guy's helmet the big helmet um i at the right there there's no helmets again on the left there's horror capes an entire troop of non-helmeted they don't even own helmets i don't think um this is great bringing the heads back there you go let's get them heads back in and cut them off um again we've got mixtures here i can't remember where i took this picture um basically the head is on the floor there which is cool so the helmet's either gone but the um the face is still there that's a horse standard in the middle that's i really wanted to show you that um that was just another this was a very old one the older they are the bloody smaller these figures get uh, look at the body in the middle been totally stripped it's got an arrow down its neck randomly um and again people without helmets getting smashed in the old jaws and everything uh, but as you can see there's loads of mixtures of people with helmets. look at all them with no helmets and that's on a siege um again this guy who's got no helmet but armored and no hayadate look no hayadate anywhere you just can't find them they're all gesan so um again uh, back to that one you've seen that one but the get hayadate the earlier ones are not there the mempos are not there you can see remember his uh, office badge of office but still no helmet there um gunners without helmets just uh, you can see the lower level people just have body armor on and he's dismounted there and that guy's running into the thing he's clearly a samurai with full banner look at that guy with loads of banners and quite high ranking with um, no helmet and um, loads it just keeps going on there were so many guys i could have just took pictures all day right guys so basically i'm going to round up now so if you've not got them get them um, book of samurai one book of samurai two you just have to study them and all of these things become self-evident you just have to read them it's by a real samurai doing the real stuff and not only that but it matches the historical writings and draw sorry drawings of the time and it matches so many things and i wish i could do more but that's a half an hour video so if you have got this far in the video 
get yourself these without a shadow of a doubt and it totally explains how samurai look and it's been great to see them in art so what i'd like to do now is i just want to be absolutely clear here is uh, i fully respect metatron um, I fully respect uh, the Shogunate, Nick, and I absolutely respect um, Japan at War. They're great channels. I'm not saying they're wrong. In fact, they are correct in the sense that, you know, uh, a samurai should be wearing a helmet. But it's not quite that simple. And, I, and it was me. I was like, it doesn't seem right to me. I think they shouldn't be wearing a helmet in many occasions. And I hope now, by the end of this video, all of us have learned something new. Because remember, up until yesterday, I was like... I'll have to go check this out. So it wasn't some. I was like, oh, I'll tell them they're wrong. It was like, I don't think so. I just don't think so. So I'm going to go find that out. And I've fully gone through it today. And I've spent, um, this is one of those videos. I know you guys who follow my channel. This is one of those videos where you say, do more editing, Anthony. This has took me from 8 o'clock this morning to about 2 in the afternoon to get this done. So let's see if this video does four or 500 views. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'll just send the information to the Shogun. And he can bloody well do it, can't they? Or Japan at War. Um, uh, Raph in his ivory tower it doesn't bother um, so anyway let's do it so there we go so all respect to those guys if you don't follow them please do follow them but they got uh, more views on their channels than I have um, so just make sure you go over to them beyond that guys so a quick round up samurai had helmets without a doubt some samurai didn't have them some samurai did wear them some samurai didn't wear them there was lots of mixtures there was peasants with no helmets there's ashigaru everybody talks about the ashigaru having that i'm actually going to go down that i don't think all the ashigaru had that at all i think many times ashigaru actually had belt bull helmets as well um i think there's a lot to be sort of researched if i'm honest i think that picture of the ashigaru just became famous because of certain documents and it was from certain areas but that's something we'll go into so there you go guys that is an overview of if samurai I wore helmets or not let me know what you think in the comments below let's hope that this video does well um, and that uh, everybody in the samurai community especially us bring come you know the ones I've mentioned can come together and try and get you the best information possible guys so there you go my name is Anthony Cummins and I would like you to subscribe click the bell do all that like the video build the algorithm so there we go enjoy guys Goodbye.